Some things need to be said. So why not say it? Say this one time. What's up, guys? Chris Flores here, Next Generation. Welcome to Flow Fridays and our Chalk Talk. This week's topic is everyone wants to train like an athlete, but nobody wants to recover like one. I was driving the car with my friend Phoenix, and she said that, and I almost pulled over. I was like, this is what I've been working on, this is what I've been doing my whole life, is telling athletes the importance of recovery. Everyone wants to flip tires, everybody wants to swing sledgehammers, everybody wants to chop ropes, everybody wants to snatch and deadlift and lift these crazy heavy weights but what you don't realize is at the pro level you have massage therapists you have athletic trainers you have reiki you have acupuncturists you have all these people at their disposal to come and help them recover so what you don't see is the recovery process they go through i was happy the other day on instagram lebron james who i follow on instagram actually had a picture of himself on his couch with this suit that you plug into the wall, I guess, or an ice machine, and he was just sitting there. It was literally a bodysuit of ice, just helping him to recover. Okay, a lot of athletes don't want to do, they don't want to do the ice baths. They don't want to sit there and do all, all the stretching and, and the manual recovery and the manual therapy that it takes to maintain that level. Now, I work mostly with young high school athletes, and one of the problems I see is they don't understand is these pro-level athletes have all these things that they can use. They don't go from lifting heavy, crazy weights to then playing an entire soccer game to then going to a basketball game. They don't do that stuff at that level. They play their one sport, and they have their proper time to recover. I mean, look at pro football players. They play on Sunday. They maybe work out three to four times during the week with heavy lifts, but the most part, they're watching film. They're recovering. They're getting their bodies ready for that next game. They're not playing three to four or five sports after that one. What I have for you guys today is my five keys to recovery. These are five keys. Now, they're not in any order. These are just five keys, the big five things I see. So I should probably call it the big five. Number one, sleep. How much rest are you getting? You can't recover if you, with three to four hours of sleep. People ask me what do I do when I work out. I personally don't lift heavy. The reason, one of the main reasons why I don't lift heavy is because I can't get the amount of sleep I need to recover for my muscles and tissue to recover. So I purposely don't lift heavy because I know if I start trying to do heavy Olympic lifts, I'm only getting three or four hours of sleep. I'm just asking for injury. I'm just asking my body to break down. So if you're not getting a proper amount of sleep, you can't do these heavy kind of lifts. Understand that your body recovers and regenerates its tissue when you're sleeping, when you're resting. That's when your body starts rebuilding the muscle tissue so you can get back into your heavy lifts. People who do Olympic lifting, they understand this, and you'll see between, even between sets, they're resting five minutes before they're doing heavy lifts. Where guys at the gym are trying to max out, and two minutes later or 30 seconds later trying to max out again, it makes no sense, okay? So you need your proper recovery time, and you need to sleep at night. So get to six to eight hours of sleep so your body can recover and regenerate. Point number two, eat. One of the things I see is people don't eat enough. Most athletes, they'll, they'll eat 2,000 calories a day, they'll eat a normal diet, they see a men's health, that's not for you. For athletes, they need a lot of calories in because you're burning so many calories, especially if you're going from soccer practice to a soccer game to a soccer tryout or a basketball game, basketball tryout, AAU, travel team. Like I see this, so it's not something I'm making up. People go from one to the next to the next. With, in between, they'll have a donut and some coffee or they'll eat cupcakes and bagels. You need the proper food, and you need to eat a lot of foods. You need to constantly be consuming calories so your body has energy. One of the things I tell people is that think about it as a car. If your car has no fuel, you're not going anywhere. So if you show up at a game and the kids like they're running around the field and they can barely move, they probably didn't have enough food or they probably did not have enough sleep. So those are two key components to recovery. Number three, flexibility and mobility. I just put those together. But you need to be able to move. If you're so sore and so tight that your body can't move and you don't have the proper range of motion, you are just asking for injury. So if I can't extend my arm all the way back because everything is so tight, I don't have the proper mobility in that area, then I'm just asking to pull something or, or tear a muscle because I can't actually move the muscle through a full range of motion. And on the field, you're trying to force it through a full range of motion. This is another thing I have a problem with as far as training-wise. If your athletes aren't doing the full range of motion during their sessions, how do you expect them on the field to move those full range of motion? So you have to get them to be able to move through proper ranges of motion in your training session so that when they get in the field, they're able to move and their body's accustomed to getting that range of motion. Flexibility and mobility are extremely important. Whether it be soft tissue work, whether you go through a massage therapist, 
uh, you do yoga. These are all great things to help your body be able to move properly through a full range of motion. Point number four is stability. A good friend of mine, Casey, once said, proximal stability equals distal mobility. So if I can stabilize myself here, I can then move through other ranges of motion. This is one of the big things I feel a lot of the trainers don't put into their programming is having their athletes be stable. Can you stabilize or what I call reactive stability? Can you move the range of motion and stop and control your body without having it lean over or fall over or tip? So this is one of the things that has to be put into your programming. One of the things I see a lot is poor programming. People sometimes focus too much on doing this reactive core, reactive stability or rotary stability. They do too much of that and not enough of anything else. Or you see the opposite end of the spectrum where it's too much lifting, too much heavy weight or Olympic lifting and not enough mobility, flexibility work or stability work. So this all has to go into your programming somehow. And this is basically the science behind being a good athletic trainer, personal trainer, physical therapist. How do you incorporate all these aspects into one program? Our last key to recovery to me is one of the most important and something I like to focus on here at Flow with the athletes is number five stress reduction or having a positive mindset. I'm not saying you have to sit there and meditate and hum or if that helps, that helps, but that's not something you have to do. What you have to do is find a way to reduce stress, no matter what it is. Okay, one of the things I did at uh, a talk I did at the high school is I said stress is stressful. Your body cannot differentiate between you being on the foul line and the game's online, you have to shoot. That's a stressful situation. You failed a biology test and now you're all pissed off because you don't know what your GPA is going to be. That's a stressful situation. You just broke up with your boyfriend, girlfriend, it's prom season, whatever it is, these are all stresses added to your body. And if you're stressed mentally and emotionally, you're going to feel it physically. Or if you had a rough day at school or a rough day at work and then you have to go to the gym and lift, those are all stresses you've dealt with all day. For some people, they can relieve the stress during the lift or during the game, but for other people, that stress just carries over into the stress they're going to put on themselves physically. So now, I'm not only are you mentally beat up all day long or emotionally beat up, now you're physically going to dump that on top of that and wondering why you're always in pain or why these joints always hurt or why you're not recovering. So I know one of the big things now is sports psychology. I know for a fact G, uh, George St. Pierre has a sports psychologist he works with because you alleviate a lot of this negative mindset stuff, you alleviate a lot of the stress, and everything else kind of starts falling into line. Five keys to recovery. These are not the only five. These are just the top five that I've seen with the people I work with because people don't work on their recovery process. If you want to train hard, you have to recover hard. So understand what your pro athletes do on the off season or their off time is all recovery work, getting them ready for that next thing, getting them ready for that next hurdle, that next game, that next match, whatever it is. So work on your recovery. Think about what you're not doing in your recovery process. Write out what you're doing in your, in your daily log or what you're doing as far as your training wise. Are you getting enough rest? Are you eating properly? Are you working on your flexibility and mobility? Do you have that? Are you working on your stability? And are you working on your mindset? Are you reading things? Are you listening to things? Are you watching things that are positive, going to influence you in a positive way so that you can alleviate a lot of the stress and help your body recover? You have it. Those are our five keys to recovery. Chris Flores, Next Generation. Be sure to check us out on Instagram. Check us out on Twitter. Follow us on Facebook. I'll see you next time for more Chalk Talk. Food, I bust my ass for my whole life and I work hard for my profit. And envy I know cuts like a knife so you probably work hard to stop it. If you know me like you're playing then how could you disregard my logic? You know I'll cut my arm.